Welcome to The Bridge TV, the voices of emerging communities. I'm your host, Dorinda Angelucci. Today, I'm with Pastor Edward Hines, the president of the 67th Precincts Clergy Council, AKA the God Squad. <laughs> Pastor Hines, welcome to you? our new set. Thank you so much, and I'm so happy to be here. and so privileged to be sharing with you at this time, Dorinda. Well, Mark insisted that you kick off season two. So <laughs> you were the first one, you're in the gate, and we did it, you're here. I love it. Tell us a little bit like how excited you are to be at The Bridge TV. It is really a, a privilege to be here and um, appreciate the work that Mark has been doing in the Flatbush community. Uh, Mark has been a partner with us for over the years and uh, the Bridge Multicultural Project is a beacon in the light of this community and so we appreciate the work that Mark is doing and to help to change the trajectory in our communities. Oh, well he adores working with you and all the clergy members. And it's just, yeah, he, he's, he's always ready to support all of your projects. Yeah, Mark is really an asset. He really appreciate his partnership. It's Absolutely. Let's first kick off with, tell us everybody, and this is just a conversation. We're just having fun. Mm -hmm. I'm sharing everything that you guys do, and you have some very, very pressing and important work that you're happening here in Flatbush that you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. But I do want to, I really want to explain to me how you got the guy's name, got the name The God Squad. So, uh, 13 years ago, um, a couple of pastors in East Flatbush um, had a conversation. We met and we said, um, at this time, the 6th of the precinct was one of the five leading precincts in New York City with high instances of gun violence. And so as pastors, they came together and, and have, how can we help to, how can we as pastors help to change that trajectory? How can we help to re re rewrite that narrative? And so we had a conversation with the then CEO of the Sixth Other Precinct, um, Corey Pegues, and his response was simply, why not start as precinct clergy council, uh, connected to the Sixth Seventh? And so that started, that gave birth to the Sixth Other Precinct Clergy Council. So as an organization, we don't work for the police. But we are called six of the Precinct Clergy Council because all of, all of our house of worship, all, over 100 churches are part of this organization. They all are in the locale of the six of the Precinct. So what are the pastors that helped start the original um, clergy, 67 Precinct Council clergy? So we, um, in 2010, we did have um, Pastor Gil Monrose, who is a founding president of, of, the, of the God Squad. Um, Bishop Eric Garnes, Bishop Orlando Finlader, um, Bishop Al Cockfield Sr., Bishop Hugh Nelson. These are some of the clergy, Pastor Terry Lee, or some of the clergy who were in the inaugural stages of the, of the organization being founded. That Pastor Monroe, my goodness, he, he's like a superstar. He, he, he really is. Um, he has paved the way for a lot of us, and a lot of us uh, look to him for mentorship and guidance. Um, as, as a key um, faith leader in, in not just in Brooklyn, but in New York City overall. He's amazing. When he walks in the room, he just dominates it. I mean, I think he should just run for president. <laughs> he's outspoken. <laughs> he's just well-liked. He's focused. He's extremely polite. Absolutely, absolutely. He's just a leader in every space. So, I don't know. Again, I'm yeah. voting past the for president. <laughs> Please. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, no, he, he really is a, a, a key role in helping to bridge the, the gap with, among clergy of just all force. faiths. He's just a force. Uh, yeah. He's beautiful. Can you please explain to me a little bit about some of your beautiful programs? Right. I had the pleasure, and I've seen you guys in action myself, but I would love to share that again with our audience. First one, though, is please talk to me about the Clergy for Safe Cities. Mm -hmm. What is that about? So the Clergy for Safe Cities, it's a coalition of um, faith leaders across the country. So when we began this um, in 2010, we had no blueprint, we had no um, best practice to look for. We did this, we worked this from the ground up. We built from the ground up. And seeing the success that the God Squad has um, emerged over the past 13 years, well then 11 years, the question was, how can we expand this model to other clergy? How can we ignite other clergy? not just in Brooklyn, not just in New York City, but across the country. Those who are doing the work and unrecognized, and those who desire the work to be done, but need the tools to help them to, 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 to bring about this change in their cities. So do you help put together a program for them, or you know, is it academic kind of support? Right, so ours for Clergy for Safe Cities, what we do is that we work with partners it's a coalition of various clergy groups and organizations across the country. So those who are doing the work 
in their particular cities. We have cities in, in DC, we have DC, Denver, Colorado, Chicago, um, Orlando, Florida, um, Savannah, Georgia, all over. And uh, we bring the minds together and to share best practices and share how we can help each other and support each other in doing the work and also um, helping clergy who have the passion, who have the zeal, but don't have the tools. So, so we have to shape and sharpen their tools. Can you share maybe one of those key tools? Is it something like, I, I'm envisioning myself one-to-one yeah. -one with a family who has a victim from gun violence. Right. Is it like that, is it that kind of interfacing? Yeah, so, so, so we train clergy and, and for the organization, we have trained over 500 clergy. Um, we, we help them to, to navigate the complexities of even um, the role of faith leaders in helping gun, gun violence. Uh, a, a key example is how there is no blueprint, there is no manual, there is no book that says how do I bear my child to gun violence. And on, in the unfortunate demise of, of, a, of a life being lost, the next step is to provide bereavement services for those families. How this is where clergy steps in and provide that role um, to navigate them through the processes, um, to connect them to resources that they need, immediate resources that are provided by the cities, and help to burying young um, victims, to uh, doing the funeral services, the God Squad, we conduct funeral services for free. We don't charge for our services. If the family is of a particular faith, we connect them to that faith and have them provide, we work with that faith to help them navigate through that complexity. And then at the end of the, of the, of the, um, the burial, we go into the next step of the work. So we don't leave our families. The next step is now having to triage them and provide for them um, resources that will help in the healing um, for the families as they, as they come to grips with the, with the unfortunate demise and how do they lead healthy lives while, while still uh, memorializing the, 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 their, their, their loved ones. I can only imagine a lot of these families or a lot of families who are victim of gun violence with a young person, they weren't prepared to bury their young person. Yeah. Um, funeral expenses are enormous. Yeah. So what a gift that you guys are giving with that kind of support, uh, yeah. especially when you're not prepared yeah, at all. Yeah, we, they, exactly. And, and we, we have, for the God Squad, we have currently 101 mothers which, which, which translate the families that we are working with because initially it began with mothers, mm -hmm. um, for, hence the name Mothers for Safe Cities. But then we have realized over time in the last year, year and two years that the siblings also have been an, an untapped area, that siblings grieve differently from mothers and then fathers who are now coming to the network grieve differently than mothers and so we are now seeking to now uh, provide um, direct help for siblings, yeah. for fathers and mothers, and holistically, do um, you the family connect home. the bereavement mm -hmm. piece to other families, to the, each other, to other families, or it just stays one to one? Right. So the mother for safe cities. That's what it is. It's a it's a healing network and peer to peer support network. So we do have mothers who have been with us from the genesis of the organization, who can help to provide that support for these new up, uh, new families coming into the system to say, we not just feel your pain, but we have walked where you are walking. Where you are, we were. And where we are, we hope that you will be. So they navigate them. And so we provide monthly peer-to-peer -peer support meetings for, for these families. And, and also to help to connect them. And to for those who desire to turn their pain to purpose, which is our, our, our hope for all of them, so if they want to start 501c3s in memory of their loved ones, we also do that for them as well. So you help them launch a business? To launch 501c3s in memory wow. of the loved ones, we connect them, we help to sign them up, wow. and, and, and where it's needed, to provide resources for them to help to do the work that they're doing. It's a part of turning their pain into purpose, so that the name of their loved one will live on forever. As you work with all these families and their young people, Tell me a little bit now how you connect it to the Flatbush Leadership Academy. So in March of 2013, March 9th to be exact, there was a police involved shooting of a young um, teenager, Kimani Gray, in East Flatbush. And that brought um, a sense of tension in the community. And so we as a guard squad, as clergy, we became that bridge between the, the cops and the community to help to ease that tension. Um, out of that um, shooting, unfortunate shooting, um, came the conversation with other stakeholders um, as to how can we provide a program 
that will steer young men at that time, young men away from violence and bring them to a path where they can understand and appreciate and walk into their purpose. And so that, that started the Flatbush Leadership Academy. Wow, I, I recall back in, I think it was about 2012, now, it had to be about 2012, maybe it was 2014. I recall back in 2014, the bridge, we hosted a, a group called Artists for Israel. And we worked with the 67th Precinct to do art, healing art campaigns. Mm -hmm. And actually, I had the, the police in the upstairs working one-to-one -one with the community members making art programming. They made uh, beautiful art murals. Right. But uh, it was a way that here at the bridge that we were trying to infiltrate and kind of support you guys with art culture and the police and the community. Correct, correct. So I think this is, it's not the same of course, right, but right. we understand how that is important to bridge the community with the police in a friendly manner. Um, and that, that's, that's kind of how we have to, to see, the, that's kind of how we understand our role, to have to be that bridge and that liaison between our cops and our community, um, to help to, to bring fusion, to, to de-escalate, and de -escalate, and for them to, to, to see uh, the cops or our, our, our law enforcement as its partners help to, help to create safer neighborhoods. We all want safer, safer neighborhoods. And so the police has their role, the community has their role, and definitely the clergy and faith leaders have their role in helping to make this a reality. Because I think my understanding too is if people are used to seeing police and they embrace them and they're not afraid of the badge, then they won't run from them. They won't uh, react. Uh, harmfully, and also I think it goes the other way, correct? If the police are used to seeing correct. young, you know, diversity people, they're not going to think that they're just hoodlums and gang members. They're going to be, they're going to have a little bit of desensitization, right? Um, yes. Of seeing that particular and face. That is a hope. That's the hope that we, that we have, and that that's why we are working feverishly in helping to through our youth program also, which which pretty much is a mentorship program. It's a mentorship life management skill training program for young people. We bring through, we bring them to 16 weeks of intense. Um, training every Saturday at once a week and it's, it's stipend based so we stipend them to learn and we provide resources for them we it's about exposing their minds um, we, it's, it's, it is a heavily for it? a, a, a no we have not we have not there's not a, a college accreditation for, for that for that program um, but we believe that the skills that we have entrenched in them during the 16 weeks we graduate them at the end of the program and they now become our alumni they don't become our voices to their peers, helping to spread the message and that which they have learned to impart to others. And so, so, so they help them to bring them to the program and also to bring our message across to a wider diaspora of, of young people. So my number one question under that is, are you getting the kids who may have possibly been exposed to gang members? Um, are you really seeing the ones that you need to really touch come into that room? That, that's a very Not good, the one that the mother sent them to the room? That's a very good, very good question. Um, when the program started, when FLA started, it was young men only, between 16 to 24. We have realized over time that, that we have had to open it up to the young, young teenagers, female teenagers, and young adults. And then um, we, we have a program called the Next Gen Program. That's a similar in terms of curriculum based, but it is specifically targeting just involved youth. I am so taken by the fact that the kids want to kind of interact with clergy members in this way. Um, I know my teenagers, you know, I have a hard time getting them to church. And I remember as a teenager, I only went to church because my parents forced me to go to church. I knew that they were people in my community that I had to respect and I had to listen to. Right. But it's really interesting that you're getting a movement of young people and teenagers in mm. your coalition and, and what you're doing with them. I yeah. mean, like, how are you guys able to make yourself so, them trust you guys and let right. their guard down to let you guys get that information into them? What, what do you think is the so, secret sauce? So as faith leaders for the God Squad, we, we follow the principle of, 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 of how, um, you know, according to our faith tradition, Jesus, um, he went out. He went out. And so for us, we are, I borrowed two quotes from one of our fellow clergy who we say, we leave the steeple and go to the people. Or we leave our benches and go into the trenches. That's what we do. So we, we reimagine the role of faith leaders. We are more than praying. After we pray, which is fundamental and foundational, we can't discount that, but after we say amen, there's another leg to it. We're putting our faith into action, our faith into work, and so we pray with our feet. We go out there 
at the key hours when the young people are out there, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 p.m., and we take off our clergy attire and we have our jeans and t-shirt, we go down, we sit and talk to them and listen to them, hear what they have to say and build trust. It is earned over time. So they will not divulge, uh, they will not share with us at the beginning because they don't know who we are. Are we just another person? Are we just coming for the first time and that we never see us again? But we are trusted voices who are constantly in the community. They see our faces, they know who we are. And over time we have built trust, especially in the program, um, bringing them to our programs and giving them resources, tools, exposing their minds. Those who are going to, to college, we provide scholarships for them because we believe that not every child will go to college. But every child must have a career right. and so whatever that part is we support them and in supporting them the trust is earned and as faith leaders we are credible messengers we are the moral conscience we are the leading the community and so with that it we have earned a relationship with them and so they're able to to share with us and on for share with them as well and and we become vulnerable at times because we weren't we weren't born clergy some of us clergy we have our, our past as well and so it, it calls for a measure of um of openness and vulnerability in sharing that which they need to know to know that you know that that we also we understand what they're going through and just how we have found our purpose we can help them to find their purpose as well I think that's incredible and I think it's more than necessary I don't really I, for some reason I don't feel like I know are you guys in the Bronx or in mid Manhattan I, for some reason I don't feel like a you're not in my community <laughs> <laughs> so, so, the, so the God Squad we are centered in East Flatbush um, and uh, that's, that's where we operate, 6th, 7th. However, we have helped to start other clergy councils, um, the 6th, 9th, the 7th, 3th, um, and others, 7th, 7th, oh. And but what we have done also through the Clergy for Safe Cities platform is to help to train other clergy right. how to preach and teach gun violence, how to act, act on, on the streets. And we have gone across New York City. So it's really so. up to these m the clergy members to, to find you guys and to join this coalition so we hope with to, you. The partnership with them, yeah. yeah it's, it's not just you popping around. Tell me, please, a little bit about that single parent university. What is that? So over the years, we have realized that a lot of the, the youths who are perpetrating a crime when we look at, when in, in working with the homes and having conversations, seem to understand the why. Um, we, find, we have found that a lot of these homes are largely single parent homes. Mothers or fathers, mothers working two or three jobs, um, unable to come home and to, and to do proper parenting because they're busy working and providing um, ec economically. But then there's a void in that young child's life that external forces have come in and sought to, to fill that gap and, and, and inevitably, negatively, and so bring them on the path. And so we have, ha we have started Single Parent University, which is really um, a, a platform that supports self-based development for single parents, help them to, to, to proper parenting, help them to be to mindful parenting, provide them resources. You know, back in, our, in, in, in my generation, um, when I think I was, we're the same generation. When, <laughs> when I was a young girl, um, it was a village concept. Yes. So I, I lived in a home with my parents, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, and so we had a village concept. Unfortunately, it's not the same, same in this time. And so we want to reimagine what village concept looks like. And that's one. And secondly, um, the, the generation that, that is being raised now, the Gen Zers, Gen Alphas, it's a different generation from the Gen Xers. Mm -hmm. um, and so how we can help them how to understand um, this generation. This generation currently is one that this, the technology is in the same category as air and water. And so um, when you tell a child, put your phone down, it, they, they can't comprehend that nope. because they're in air technology. How can we help them um, to better understand their generation and how can they help the children to understand the parent generation? Because in, in, in understanding the both generations, we can see how we can find that synchronous um, lifestyle. And also, single parents as well, who they may have put their lives on hold because of the raised children. Um, we, help, we seek to help to provide um, a, a quest, quest for them, uh, whatever path they want to go down, on any untapped resources, um, help provide scholarships for them, want to go back to school, whatever their needs it are. It sounds like it just needs to be mandatory for every person who's about to have a child going to <laughs> parenting education. I don't think single parent needs to be at all of us. No, I agree. This is I, I agree because parenting the gen um, zeros and gen alphas, it's, it's a whole different dynamic. Yes. And so we seek to provide the tools and strategies that will, that will take on the, ch the challenge yeah. and also to celebrate the triumphs. 
because not all guys, negative as well for 100%. the hundred percent. And do you guys help? What about the fact that some there's a lot of neurodiversity issues um, within our community? And, you know, that's just every place. How does that kind of impact helping single families and the gen alphas? Like, do you guys see a little bit of that? Or are you guys able to resource on that level? On, this, on the psychodynamic and the neuropsychotic level? Do you guys help that? Um, so we, uh, we, we, look at the, we do it from a holistic level. Mm -hmm. Because, again, we have realized that there is what we call generational trauma. Uh, trauma being passed down from generation to generation, and that has had a mental imp uh, mental health challenges that have, have been um, plaguing our society, plaguing our young people, and so we seek now to connect them with with resources, with organizations or background service providers who can help to prof to bring provide a response to that as well. Um, and while not evidence based from a scientific perspective, but sure. definitely. We believe that impacting the mind and help to shift in the narrative, help to shift them um, with their mindset, change their mindset, will help we'll be able to change the trajectory of, our, of young people in our society. Pastor Hines, I know that you guys are very instrumental in helping on crisis, uh, especially in other communities. Right. Uh, can you tell me of an example um, that you would want to share with everyone uh, that was pretty impactful across the city when you, when you got out outside of Flatbush? Oh, absolutely. Um, so while our main thrust is gun violence, um, we, we understand that crisis is crisis. And when there is need for a collective response, then we absolutely become a part of that. Uh, we had a Bronx fire last year, um, devastated the, 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 the many families. And so um, we thought, how could we provide support for that? Um, we had the connection, and so we met with, with Mark, Mark, Mark here at the bridge. And, and we had a united front where we, we have a crisis response vehicle. And so we were able to bring all resources, some resources here, we were able to reach out to clergy, ask us to help us with supplies that we need um, to help these families to, to get back on their feet. Um, we met with Mark, we met at Bridge, and then we all traveled together in one convoy to Bronx, and were able to provide that resources and to help to be a support system and, and a part of the, of, of, the, of the healing. Good morning, everyone. I'm Council Member Farrah Lewis. I represent the 45th Council District, and today I'm surrounded by leaders, community leaders around the city, but particularly in Brooklyn. When Brooklyn comes together, we unite, we come together because it's not about race, it's not about religion, it's not about culture, but it's about love, it's about support. So today we're gathered here for the families in the Fordham Heights section of the Bronx. 22 families, or maybe over 22 families, have been displaced by a horrific fire. And what they have left from the fire is the clothes on their backs, but most of all, a devastating memory of this horrific fire that happened on Sunday. So we're gonna come together uh, in prayer. I'm gonna ask Pastor Hines from the 67 Clergy Council, also known as the God Squad, to open us up in prayer. God, we come to you today. We are so thankful for your mercies to us and that you have given us these mercies, not just for ourselves, but to extend our love and our heart, our compassion to others, as you have taught us to. Here we are on this spot of ground as we prepare to head over to the Bronx. Thank you very much, Reverend, for that wonderful prayer. And may God be with all the victims and all the families and show them some support. But thank you very much, Councilwoman Farrell Lewis, for being here. I mean, this is not the first time that Brooklyn comes together as one. We've been together as one for the last two years battling the epidemic, the pandemic of the coronavirus. And we. We've done it together. Atia is here from Paso. Uh, Shmir is here from the patrol. So we've been doing this kind of work, the 67th Precinct Community Council, the Haitian Nurses Association, um, and all of our association, the New York Rescue Team. We've been doing this stuff together in Brooklyn for many, many, many years. But this tragedy hit us in the below. It hit us very bad because there were so many young children and so many families that were displaced, burned. You saw those horrific pictures on TV. And Brooklyn got together, was immediately got together. The first call I got together was from a Jewish organization, from Mr. Leifer. And then I got a call from uh, Faith Henderson, from, and she, you know, and 67th Precinct, and the mayor's office got involved. Uh, so it was really, it's, I think it's the beginning of a new wave in America, especially in Brooklyn. A new wave. We, we work together. There's a tragedy. We not only celebrate each other, but we, 
work together to overcome grief and sorrow and pain. So it's so nice to be here. We're headed off to the Bronx in a few minutes. And in the Bronx, uh, Faith is doing an assessment of what they need. And if they need something after today, we don't stop. You know, we continue this program. I am Pastor Edward Hines, Executive Director for the 6th, 7th Precinct Church Council of the God Squad. And we are an organization of faith leaders in Brooklyn doing the work of gun violence, doing the work of heal, helping to heal our communities and to lessen the tensions between our, our churches, our cops, and our community. Uh, today we are out here um, grieving with, with those families that lost their loved ones on Sunday in a horrific fire in the Bronx. And as faith leaders, as, as we, 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 we empathize with them, we mourn with them, we grieve with them, but we also support them. And um, having gone over there and having assessed the, the needs of the, of the families who have been displaced, they have lost their homes, they have lost their personal um, per, their personal uh, wares, they, are, they, are, they, are, they have lost a lot. And so we are seeking to bring hope. And so we have partnered with other um, clergy councils, other organizations, such as the Bridge. Um, we'll be joining over there shortly. We'll be bringing supplies to them, we're bringing the supplies that, that they need, um, food items, clothing, um, to help to, 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 to bring back a sense of, of, of normalcy to them as best as, as we can. We know that, that there are other agencies, other groups, the city is working hard, but we're also playing our part um, as, as faith leaders to say that we care, and not to say that we care, but to show that we care as well. Pastor Hans, tell us, I was looking and I was digging on your website <laughs> and what happened to that Behind the Headlines podcast with Pastor Van, Pastor Van Rose? Like, wh what's going on? I think the last one was, what, 2020? Yeah. <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was a, um, a, a very important uh, podcast that we have, Beyond the Headlines, as we sought to um, have faith leaders provide responses on various issues. Um, but as the organization morphs and, and evolves, um, we are now in our 13th year, so we are right now what we call a teenager, <laughs> <laughs> teenage years. So with the transition of Pastor Monroe on the city level, and then my, my taking up the helm of the organization, uh, humbly serving, uh, we, we sort of reimagine how can we broaden the, the, the podcast um, to now um, include more of the voices of, from the community, um, especially our youth. And so we're looking into how we can revive that, but of course having the youth there, have youth being up, being voices um, and the single parents, and so we have to bring that in, and so to provide a, a comprehensive and a holistic um, uh, response. And so we're 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 in process of doing that. Well, there's no other place to start that than right here at the Bridge Absolutely. TV. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> this is the new home. We're gonna Absolutely. we have to revive that, and yeah. we want those young people sitting right here yeah. making their own podcast yeah. and being reporters and hosts. Yeah. and absolutely putting a face to all that great work you're doing in Thank the community. So there, it, It's amazing, it's wonderful, it's heartfelt. And where can people go to church if they, they see you guys and they want to just come and, and worship with you on Sunday? What's the church that they should attend? Um, if so they want to see you, Monroe's like, you know, please, it's feel, feel free to yeah. share. It's not so, so the God Squad, so we are interfaith, we are non-denominational, um, so we go across all faiths. Um, and so it's not just one ch house of worship. We have several houses of worship, in, as they're all in the East Flatbush um, lo locale. So anyone is free to attend any, any house of worship that they feel comfortable um, in, in good as, a, as an expression of their, of, of their faith tradition. Understood, understood. Thank you so much for coming. It was my pleasure being here. Thank you so much for being a part of season two of The Bridge TV. Thank you so much. And I'm so excited that we were to, to, to kick off season two. Kick it off. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. And, and we wish all the best um, for The Bridge TV as you continue to, to showcase organizations and individuals who are doing extraordinary work in the community. Our hope and our, our desire is that we have safer communities um, wholesome communities and health communities again and so we appreciate the work that Thank you're you doing so as much. well. And I don't have to give you this but you definitely are part of our Unity in Action team. Oh, absolutely. So this is <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Thank you so much. I, I'm, I'm going to put my left and make it work. There we exactly. go. Exactly. Thank you. There we go. <laughs>